Hello friends, I am Vladimir Vasiliev. Once again, I'm happy to welcome you to my channel. And today we are testing a benchmark airplane once again. Because if we are talking about twin engine airplanes, there are planes that are faster, like Piper Aerostar. There are planes that are more comfortable, like Cessna 421. There are planes that are more spacious, more economical. But there is a benchmark. Benchmark, probably there is such a unit of measurement, it is one baron. And so every twin engine aircraft strives to add up to this one. 0.8 Baron, some 0.92. So meet. Today, we have the Baron 55E on the test. I've been thinking about what to compare it with the automotive world, this airplane. Something very classic, very prestigious, very stylish, that carries this beauty and power, and power through the years. And probably, it's probably the opportunity after all. The Galanderwagen. It's a classic design, a classic construction, a classic durability. That is, well, very great structural strength is built into this airplane. He is truly good for very cruising flights. He is good with his load capacity. Right now, we are flying at about 350 kilometers per hour at an altitude of 10,000 feet on atmospheric engines. So it is quite fast. And now we are consuming about 90 liters of fuel for two engines. Beechcraft Baron took off for the first time in 1960. So in fact, it has been flying for 64 years and is still being produced. Yes, a longer model is currently being manufactured, which is the 58th, and we are lucky. Right now, we are testing one of the latest versions of the Short Baron. It's a short aircraft. The 58th is longer, a bit more comfortable, but the advantage of this airplane is a lightweight. It has very large engines. Specifically, the engines from version 58 are installed here. These are AO520, each with 285 horsepower. And the power reserve of this aircraft is simply astonishing. That is to say, if we are talking about mus about cars, about hot rods, this precisely is it. So, on one hand, yes, many other modern airplanes have already appeared, but the Beechcraft Baron remains unsurpassed in its class. On the other hand, it has a completely timeless design. The airplane we are flying on now is one of the latest versions released because the 55 was produced from 1960 to 82. This airplane is from 1981. I actually have now fully equipped it with a modern system, an aeronautical system. It has become an absolutely modern airplane that can perform. Well, in fact, let's say like automatic landing completely, meaning this is modern navigation and it's just nice to fly it, like cruising. And sometimes, of course, you can have fun on it, like flying around the airfield. Probably its true element is long distances. But if you want, let's say, to get such a powerful adrenaline rush from a cruise aircraft, I can hardly imagine what could be. Because it allows both some mischief and to carry out such a big, I don't know. I mean, it's actually, it's an emotional plane. I love Barons. Probably, to briefly speak about the technical characteristics of this plane, it can fly at a cruising speed of about 220 miles, which is its cruising speed. At the same time, it consumes around 20 to 25 gallons of fuel. Well, in some cases, if it is heavily loaded, it can even reach 100 litres. But it's a very powerful machine. It can take off from short runways. It handles bad weather very well. And, in fact, this plane, well, it's, it's kind of, I don't know, it embodies strength and power. I talk a lot and with emotion about this airplane. You're talking about extra power. When is it really needed in practice? Because with a car, extra power is often just to show off and say, wow, look at the angle of attack I can take off with. Or is it actually really necessary sometimes? 
Well, let's say, from a practical point of view, of course, this additional power allows you to take, for instance, four passengers, fill up the fuel tanks, and still carry some luggage. This lets you take off with the payload from not the longest runways. The second point, power greatly helps in conditions of integration. When you start acquiring ice, and let's say, not always is this ice shed well, the additional power still allows for fight and pull the plane. Even when it loses a bit in aerodynamics, additional drag appears. Also, speaking of the same icing, you are flying at some altitude. Suddenly you start to ice up. And, and sometimes you need to go lower. Sometimes you need to go higher. This power allows you to gain altitude as high and quickly as possible to pass the zone. The zone where the airplane starts to accumulate ice. A little bit of showing off, right? Well, about showing off, yeah, that's probably the main thing. So, probably, if you want to fly a super powerful plane, if you need to travel and take your family and a lot of baggage with you, this plane is just for you. Despite its age, this model is so refined over time, and here, almost everything is brought to perfection. This aircraft is certified to fly. Well, let's say it is an all-weather aircraft. In this version, it is equipped with a thermal guidance system. Boots are installed here, so-called. The leading edges of the wings and the tail surfaces, um, heated propellers, and a special fluid is also sprayed on the windshield to remove ice plus the installed weather radar, installed to have, well, having quite enough, a large enough package of information that the pilot receives, which allows to fly for quite a long period of time. Specifically, this plane was manufactured in 1981. It's clear that it was also equipped with Equipped, but let's say from 40 years ago. Specifically, this airplane has been modified and turned into an absolutely modern one, meeting all a new standards aircraft. For example, for the equipment. It has a Garmin G500TX IPFD installed. That is, initially, we have all the information necessary for the pilot. We can enlarge the screen. We can bring up any information we need. This is about other aircraft. The main thing, of course, the heart is the Garmin G750. So this is actually the flight management system. This system integrates everything. Moreover, even if you are flying manually and you start doing something silly, this autopilot will still try to correct it because it is maximally focused on safety. And yes, standby screen, of course, it's such a, a device I really love. In fact, it seems like a small, small device, but it integrates everything that's in this device into a small form factor. It has an independent battery that lasts about three hours. So even if, let's say, electricity fails, fails, completely lost power, all devices went off, this device can autonomously work for three hours. And it carries all the functionality, so we have an artificial horizon speed altimeter. We can change its functions if necessary. We can change the functions of this device with one click. And this, in case of an emergency situation, it will substitute and give us three more hours to fly to arrive and sort things out without problems. I hope you enjoyed the review of this truly benchmark aircraft. It's beautiful, it's sleek, it's strong, it's, it's, I don't know. Flying it is like taming a beast. Flying such amazing aircraft, the ones we fly. Come to the skies, I'm Vladimir Vasiliev, signing off. See you in the next episodes.